Well, would you look at that? A memory corruption vulnerability in Linux's memory safe Rust code. <laughs> because, of course, uh, here's the details. Rust programmers rewrote a portion of the Linux kernel, uh, in this case, uh, Android's uh, binder driver, in Rust. Be because, because, of course, they did. <laughs> That's what they do. It would seem that rewriting completely functional code in Rust is a religious obligation for a Rust programmer. You can't be admitted into the church of Rust unless you start rewriting everything in Rust. That code was published in one of the, the most recent Linux kernel update from uh, a few weeks back, about a, about a month and a half back. Yesterday, uh, yesterday evening, it was revealed that there was a vulnerability in that code which a CVE has been issued for. Uh, the vulnerability has been fixed because they didn't announce it until they had it fixed. It had been known about for quite some time. They, they, they just kept it hush-hush and didn't tell anyone until it was fixed. That's that's actually pretty common. That's pretty standard operating procedure for most of these common vulnerabilities and exploits, but uh, it's worth noting just the same. So that vulnerability, which could take down an entire system, like it's a, a full system-wide, bring it to its knees, crashing sort of bug, was due to a memory corruption error in the memory safe Rust code, because remember, Rust is memory safe. That's the entire point, is it's memory safe, because that's the whole point of it existing. Apparently, we're told repeatedly, we're flogged about the head with a giant dead mackerel with the, oh, it's memory safe constantly. Oh, but look at this, memory corruption errors. Uh, now, to be fair, to be completely fair, if you investigate the specific offending Rust code here, you will find that the code itself is unsafe. It has an unsafe call to it, <laughs> which is a way for Rust developers to do memory unsafe code <laughs> calls within their Rust code. Um, but but here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. And I'll bring, I'll bring this up here so you can see a little bit here. Uh, Rust binder contains the following unsafe operations. Uh, a node death, it's, this is node death, it's what this is called here, uh, is never inserted into the death list of any other uh, than its owner. So it's either in this death list or it's in no death list, unsafe, and then it calls death list, which is just a great name for something anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Calling something death list and then having that crash an entire system just it feels appropriate, but it's called from an unsafe block. So an unsafe function call. Um, but that's that's not unusual within Linux. L Linux, if you do searches within the Linux kernel sources, you'll find so many unsafe calls within the Rust code. The, the amount of .rs files that are just filled with unsafes is legion. The Linux kernel is lousy with unsafe calls because you can't really write any effective Rust code uh, of any significant type without a huge number of unsafe calls, which I'm just gonna point this out, defeats the entire stated purpose of having memory safe rust if you have unsafe calls from here to kingdom come. Uh, and, and Linux kernel is not unusual in this regard. If you look at the rust code being pumped out by uh, all the major projects, you will find unsafe code everywhere, like literally the unsafe call in rust all over the place. Uh, System76 has a new desktop environment they call Cosmic. Uh, that they're they're shipping nowadays with their pop OS uh, and cosmic is is written entirely in rust why because the lead engineer at system 76 is a member of the church of rust and everything has to be rust and you have to wear cat ears or whatever it, you have to you have to rewrite everything in rust and there that that code is filled to the brim with unsafe calls it's probably more unsafe calls than it is anything else it's just non uh, that's a little bit of an exaggeration but it's lousy with it right um, and it's just it's just off the charts. So this is happening with a itsy bitsy teeny weeny polka dot bikini level of code written in Rust for the Linux kernel because most of the Linux kernel is not in Rust. Uh, uh, this much, this much of the Linux kernel is in Rust right now, and we're already seeing 
large crash, bring down your whole system, memory corruption errors in the Rust code for Linux. Um, <laughs> the exact sort of thing that it was designed to prevent. Now, um, this was announced by Greg Crow Hartman, by Greg KH, um, who is one of the Linux kernel maintainers. And because this says something that could be interpreted as critical of Rust, because, oh my gosh, there is a crashing memory corruption uh, CVE caliber bug within the Linux kernel because of the Rust code, that could be interpreted as a bad thing. <laughs> I don't know why. Crazy. And so Greg Cage had to get out in front of this. And because if you say something that could be interpreted as criticism of Rust code, you will be attacked a lot because the Church of Rust requires, requires people to attack people who criticize Rust. Note, every time I say something even mildly could be vaguely interpreted as critical of Rust, people begin to attack me just for that. And it won't, it doesn't even matter. I could say something about a language that isn't Rust and I will get attacked for not mentioning Rust. I could say something about Linux in general where I don't even say the word Rust and people will begin attacking me because I might have criticized Rust. It's crazy how, how much of a religious zealotry this all is. So Greg Cage had to get out in front of this. Uh, he posted this over on uh, uh, his, uh, his Fediverse instance. Quote, Rust is not a silver bullet that can solve all security problems, but it sure helps out a lot, and it will cut out huge swatches of Linux kernel vulnerabilities as it gets used more widely in our code base. That being said, we just assigned our first CVE for some Rust code in the Linux kernel where the offending issue just caused a crap. Okay. So in order, before he can even tell people what he's talking about, he has to talk about how, man, Rust is sure great. It sure helps out a lot. It's going to make things peachy keen throughout all the Linux kernel when it gets used more regularly. But uh, we used it an itsy bitsy tiny bit, and here's CVEs that resulted from it that didn't necessarily exist in the code that we're replacing that was originally written in C. Aha, uh -huh. got it. Got it. No, no. Say no more, Greg. You definitely won't get flogged by the Church of Rust today because you <laughs> you did your obligatory. Rust sure is great. It's memory safe and everything's secure now. But memory corruption errors and your whole systems are crashing. Got it. Let's 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 port more code. Boy, I sure hope they do that more. Let's take more of that C code and port it over to Rust. Kind of like with what we're seeing with all the GNU core utils and and everything else that's getting mandatorily forced ported from C or C++ over to Rust. It'll be fine. And I want to say this straight up. Uh, straight up because it needs to be said every time we talk about this because the the followers of the church of rust cannot seem to comprehend and understand these basic simple concepts uh and, and I, I mean that full on flat out i'm not not even being sarcastic they can't seem to get this idea the problem here is not the rust programming language right rust is a fine programming language there are problems with it Notably, it's not a stable language yet, meaning it's it's still morphing, it's still evolving. And so basing large scale enterprise grade projects on an evolving morphing language has some significant challenges to it. It doesn't mean it's necessarily a terrible idea, but it means there are significant problems with it just because of that. And there, there's some other uh, security vulnerabilities and cer certain issues with the way Rust is structured from the compiler point of view, there's a lot of issues with Rust, but it's entirely possible to write very good, very quality, very stable, very secure code in Rust, just like it is in C or Fortran or whatever JavaScript. I mean, it's, it's possible to write great code in darn near any language. The language itself is not the issue here. The issue is taking working code, throwing it out and forcing a port 
because you have bought into a religious belief that all the code in this new language language is instantly better. We've seen it time and time again where people declare that if it's written in Rust, it's better. And when you look through projects, uh, project after project on GitHub and everywhere else, a lot of times the first thing that people will tell you about a project before they tell you the name, before they tell you what it does or what platforms it runs on, they'll tell you it's written in Rust. <laughs> the very first thing that is the most important thing to a large number of Rust programmers. And I'm not saying every Rust programmer falls into this basket. I'm saying the church of Rust followers fall into this basket. And that's, that's the issue is we're taking working code, forcing it to be rewritten not necessarily seeing a direct benefit from that, but in fact, we're seeing new bugs because of that. Additional bugs we would not have otherwise had because of that, because that's how it works. It doesn't matter if you were rewriting this code in the same language. You could take the, the Android binder drivers in Rust or in C and rewrite them from scratch in C and still have a new crop of bugs because you just threw out working code and you rewrote the whole gosh darn thing. That's not a great idea unless you have a very clear thing you're trying to solve with that specific rewrite. And, and, and looking at the documentation that I've seen, for this particular bit of code, the, the Android's binder stuff, um, it didn't look like from what I could gather, there was a truly compelling reason to make the port, to, to rewrite the whole gosh darn thing in, in any language. Um, now, uh, maybe there is on the back end, behind the scenes, and they just didn't tell anyone, but they've had some blog posts and whatnot about it. I read through them, and they made some arguments, but they weren't good arguments. They were arguments that if I were their dev manager, I would say, no, go back to work and write code that's actually useful. Let's not rewrite for the sake of rewriting. Let's not, and if we do it, we're certainly not going to pick in the Linux kernel uh, for a, a core bit of functionality that underpins millions of devices, tens and hundreds of millions of devices, we're not going to pick a language that is still a moving target. Lock down Rust first, <laughs> have a clear and compelling reason to make the complete rewrite, and then we can talk. That's what a manager should have said to this. Just like we've seen with the, the, the core utils and uh, uh, that, that Ubuntu is shipping with now and, and all the things we're seeing happening with Debian and so many other platforms, just to make a clear and compelling argument or knock it off. This, this story is interesting to me because it, it reinforces all of that, all of that which we talked about. And it provides yet another example of how if you are going to say something, that may be construed as critical of Rust. In this case, just the fact that there was a bug, a simple bug, a bug that could have happened in any programming language at all, and, and, and has in spades, because it's not, it's not that unusual. But the fact that, that a, the statement that a bug existed and you had to fix it required a Linux kernel, a longtime Linux kernel maintainer, Greg KH, to come out and bow down on his hands and knees and talk about how great Rust is and how Rust is wonderful and it'll make everything better the more it's used. Two things with that. First, it's clear he's trying to placate the religious masses, the, the horde of the followers of the Church of Rust saying, don't lynch me, I'm a faithful like you, right? He's clearly, clearly trying to do that. And the second is, this sounds an awful lot like the argument many people make for socialism. Bear with me. You know, when you hear people who really believe in uh, socialism or communism, let's say communism, right? And they say things like, uh, when you ever say, oh man, you know, communism, it doesn't work. Socialism, uh, you go to socialist, that just doesn't work. And they'll say things like, well, true communism's never been tried. The, the problem isn't that with socialism, it's that there's not enough socialism. That's the exact argument we're seeing here. 
Oh, we're having bugs in the Rust code. Oh, it's a lot of memory corruption bugs and memory safe Rust. The problem is that we don't have enough Rust in the Linux kernel. Um, uh, this will cut out, quote, this will cut out huge swatches of Linux kernel vulnerabilities as it gets used more widely in our code base right oh we won't see the benefits until it's used everywhere we gotta it's gotta be everywhere first no one's ever tried true rust adoption uh-huh it's a religious belief just like the belief it, the the uh unstoppable unshakable belief that communism would be great if we just gave it a fair chance that's what we're seeing here and that's not again not to say that the rust programming language couldn't be fine uh, you know what? You could probably, if you solidified Rust and say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna lock the language specification down now. We're gonna stop fiddling with it because they keep fiddling with it, and just lock it down and say, okay, we're gonna build a brand new kernel and whole OS from scratch in Rust. Doable? Absolutely. Could it be quality? You betcha. Could it be great. <laughs> it absolutely could. It's not the language that's the issue. It's not the uh, concepts of the technology that's the issue. It's the religious belief and the non-scientific, non-engineering styled approach to how it's being implemented. Those are the problems. Uh, I'm gonna get yelled at for this one because I said something critical of Rust and you're not allowed to do that. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for making it possible to do the work that I do here at the Lunduke Journal. Go to lunduke.com. You can get free subscriptions for free everywhere the Lunduke Journal publishes. Uh, locals, Substack, X, the podcast feed, Fountain, People don't even know what fountain is. It's there. iTunes, uh, Spotify, uh, Rumble, uh, Patreon. Uh, there's MP4. There's so many things. The MP4 downloads, actually, you have to be a subscriber for. But everything else is, is totally free. But if you do want the MP4 downloads or the PDF ebooks or the exclusive forum access or just to support the work of the Lunduke Journal, you can become a paying subscriber to the Lunduke Journal. And all throughout the month of December, monthly and yearly subscriptions are half off and lifetime subscriptions which is pretty sweet is only 89 friggin dollars you can pick them up with uh locals with via substack or even just via bitcoin now, there's lots and lots of options uh go to lunduke.com scroll down on the right hand side of the page and all the all the options are there and if you do become a lifetime subscriber you can head on over uh it will you can become a immortalized on the Lunduke Journal lifetime subscription wall of shame, like these amazing people. Oh, here's a second wall because the first wall got filled up. And here's the third wall. We just started the third wall. Uh, I just started populating that as actually this morning. I've got a couple more people to add here. <laughs> We'll see how quickly the third wall fills on up. So thank you to all the subscribers who make the Lunduke Journal possible. I absolutely could not do this without you. Uh, you are phenomenal. You are amazing. And the trust that you put in me to get the word out about so many news stories that nobody else seems to cover uh, is deeply humbling and gratifying. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare, end broadcast.